Right, what is up everyone? It is Justin from Base Minge Painting. I hope we're all doing very, very well. Right, I'm just going to balance the camera a little bit. Right, how are we all? I hope we're all doing well. Right, um, this video is um, a little bit of a special one for myself. It's um, to do with the Brush and Quill Challenge. And um, he set out a challenge about six, eight weeks ago. <coughs> Excuse me to anyone who wanted to take part in the challenge and the challenge was to paint anything to do with world war one now it could be anything it could be a miniature a vehicle a tank a diorama anything so i chose this figure and this figure is from tommy's war um and tommy's war is if you don't know the company it's a range of British and Empire figures modelled on the British and Empire armed forces of the First World War. And this figure is a private from the Middlesex Regiment. Now, the Middlesex Regiment um, held the right of the line for the Second Corps along the Mons Conde Canal on August 23rd, 1914. Now this figure shows a member of that regiment as he would have appeared moving up to the front line prior to the battle. Um, he is shown with the 1908 web equipment, as you can see, um, and shoulders a mark to short magazine Lee Enfield SMLE. His relaxed pose. Now this bit, when I read this, I've read this several times now, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. It says, um, his relaxed pose reflects the misunderstanding of the horrors that the army would see. Now, you look on his face, you probably see, he looks relaxed. He looks as if he's just going to go there, do his duty for king and country, and then come home. But probably 90% of them did come home, and those that did come home were wounded, gassed, blinded, and limbs missing. So... And I chose this figure. I didn't want to do a firing pose or anything like that. Um, I just wanted that difference about the war, not the shooting version. It's just a single person from a little town in Middlesex who wanted to do his duty for king and country, was unsure what he was getting into. Um, and this figure was sculpted by Nino Pizzashemi. Now, I do apologise if I've um, messed your name up. And um, <clears throat> it is an absolutely fantastic figure. It's a 54 mil, which is around about 56, 58 mil from foot to eye. It's 132 scale. And um, it's in resin. Let me move the camera up a little bit. There you go. And the paint-wise, I... Um, I really wanted to get the, the green right. And before, well, when I started painting this and when I finished it, I've just realised that Thomas Warren now do a painting guide, uh, do paints for said figures. But the paints I've used are General GW paints, not this one. Uh, General GW paints and some Vallejo. Now, the base itself... Um, let's keep the camera still. There you go. Is from Luke's APS. It's the arid grasslands base. Now, I was going to buy an actual trench because if you go onto the website, you can buy the trenches, the like trench segments. And because he was then walking off to war and he's got that look about him and not caring in the world, sort of thing, um, I wasn't sure about having it in the trench. Yeah, so I literally had this little oval base spare and used the grasslands and it is then drying. As you can still see the paint around the edges. But this is, oops, sorry. This is um, my completed Tommy's War figure to, for the centenary for the end of World War One. Um, I tried to keep it as close as possibly could to the um, to the uniform colours, but 
I was very, very pleased about the way it came out. I was a little bit hesitant about painting something this big because I'm used to painting a little 28 mil, 6 mil, 15 mils. But um, yeah, very, very, very pleased with the way it came out. Um, but this just goes out to all the men and women of the armed services who sign up on that dotted line to do the do their duty for king or queen and country um several of my friends are in the army oh, who have served so to everyone in the armed services thank you thank you very much